Hades is an indie game that has gained a lot of traction since its release in December of 2018. It is a game with a huge following despite not having a AAA company backing it up. Hades was released for early access on December 6, 2018 by the company Supergiant Games and its full release would be on August 13, 2021 for all consoles. Hades is a roguelike game where you play as the Greek god Zagreus, son of Hades, attempting to escape his home of Tartarus, the Greek underworld, despite his father's constant intervention to keep him in the underworld. Zagreus must fight through hordes of undead monsters and Greek legends to escape and find his way to his believed mother, Persephone. The game dives you straight into an escape plan and you must learn the combat from there while picking up boons from the other Greek gods attempting to assist Zagreus escaping Tartarus. To make it out alive, you must utilize all the resources given to you by dodging, slashing, throwing, exploding, and even shooting your way through the mobs of enemies that continue to get stronger and more numerous. I enjoyed the different power-ups that the game provides and setting game plans for each run of which god boons I prefer for the different weapons. The absurdity of starting with a simple sword to using a rifle empowered by Zeus's lightning while moving through the various mobs all using different abilities to send you back home through death. Each weapon has a unique feeling and I'm sure anyone can find a favorite. The sword is the most basic, then it, switch, then it quickly changes to a spear that gives a lot of reach, a shield that can ricochet off enemies, a bow and arrow that can shoot arrows across the map, gauntlets that make Zagreus a boxer, and a rifle that makes Hades a run and gun game. I found the rifle and the shield the most fun and versatile as the power-ups can change each weapon drastically. I also enjoyed the interaction with the characters. Each death is an inevitable in the game. Resetting back home and talking to your father Hades, the hero Achilles, or even the bosses that you fight such as Meg gives more life to the characters and explores more into their relationships. You can also give gifts to the characters with nectar that increases your relationship with them and gives you keepsakes that can help empower you on your next run. The power-ups in the mirror are also a nice addition. It makes each failure feel like a step towards success. The game may be a bit hard, which may sway people away from playing it since you will die a lot. If not used to the fast combo, the combat, or you just have an unlucky run with boons and other power-ups, the random generated levels and power-ups may cause an unfun run, or you simply get overpowered by a room full of exploding shielded enemies. On the other end of the spectrum, if you beat the game in the first few runs, the game seems to lose a bit of the replay value, even with the addition of extra power-ups and additional challenges. After completing the game, it seems pretty well wrapped up and concluded other than Zagreus pushing to escape Tartarus again. If you do stay with the game and continue to do more runs, uh, then more rooms in the home castle will open for the player to explore and you'll get more power-ups. However, one could argue that you have already beaten the game, so what's the point other than 100% the game? Uh, overall, I enjoyed Hades and I do see myself returning repeatedly to enjoy escaping Tartarus and interacting with the rich characters of the Hades world. I will also hold Hades in fond memory, and I do look forward to other Supergiant projects uh, in the future uh, and going back to play their other projects such as Bastion.